We were alone. We were the only ones in school. At least, that's how it seemed in the following days. As I went about my day, I felt her going about hers. I sensed her movement, her presence in distant parts of the building. Walking the halls between classes, I didn't have to see her. I knew she was there, unseen in the mob heading my way, about to turn a corner five classroom doors down. I homed in on the beacon of her smile. As we approached each other, the noise and the students around us melted away and we were utterly alone, passing, smiling, holding each other's eyes, floors and walls gone, two people in a universe of space and stars. And then, one day, I began to discover that we were more alone than I had dreamed. It was a Thursday. Normally on that day, after third period, Stargirl and I would pass each other on the second floor around the teacher's lounge. We would smile and say hi and continue on our way to our separate classes. On this day, impulsively, I fell in alongside her. How about an escort? I said. She grinned slyly. Anybody in mind? We touched little fingers and walked on. Her next class was on the first floor, so we went down the nearest stairway. We were walking side by side. That's when I noticed. No one spoke to us. No one nodded to us. No one smiled at us. No one looked at us. A crowded stairway and no shoulder, no sleeve brushed us. Students climbing the steps veered to the railing or wall. Except for Stargirl jabbering in my ear, the usual raucous chatter was absent. Mostly what I noticed were the eyes. Faces turned up from the steps below, but the eyes never connected with us. They went right on through us as if they were gamma rays. Or they nipped our ears and rattled off among the walls and other eyes. I had an urge to look down at myself to make sure I was there. At lunch, I said to Kevin, Nobody looks at me. He was staring at a sandwich. Kevin! I snapped. Now you're doing it! He came up laughing. He looked me square in the eyes. <laughs> Sorry. Usually there were others at the table. Today, there was only us. I learned, I, I leaned across my lunch. Kevin, what's going on? He looked off, then back at me. I was wondering when you'd notice, kind of hoping you wouldn't. Notice what? He stalled by taking a bite of tuna salad sandwich. He took his time chewing. He drank orange aid from a straw. First of all, it's not you. I pulled back. I held out my hands. It's not me? What's that supposed to mean? It's who you're with. I sat there blinking, staring at him. Stargirl? He nodded. Okay, I said. So? He stared at me some more, chewed, swallowed, sipped, looked away, looked back. They're not talking to her. The words didn't stick. What do you mean? Who's they? He cocked his head at the sea of tables and eaters. Them. Who them? I said, too unhinged to laugh at my grammar. He wet his lips. All of them. He shrugged. Well, almost. His eyes drifted over my shoulder. There's still two girls sitting with her. I glanced back. At the height of Stargirl's popularity, kids had been pulling chairs from other tables to squeeze around hers. Now it was Stargirl, Dory Dilson, and a ninth grader. So? I said, exactly what is going on? He sipped from his straw. The silent treatment is going on. Nobody's talking to her. It still wasn't clicking. What do you mean, nobody's talking to her? What, did everybody have a meeting in the gym and vote on it? It wasn't that official. It just happened. Got up steam. I gaped at him. When? When did it start? How? Why? I was beginning to screech. I don't really know exactly. After the basketball stuff, I guess, that really ticked off a lot of people. The basketball stuff, he nodded. The basketball stuff, I repeated dumbly. He put down his sandwich. Leo, don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Cheering for the other team. What did you think? People thought that was cute? It was her, Kevin. It was harmless. Weird, maybe, but harmless. It was her. He nodded slowly. Yeah, well, I guess that's what I'm saying. It's not just one thing she did. It's everything. Don't tell me you never noticed. Remember a certain tomato? Kevin, a couple of months ago, everybody stood and cheered in the auditorium when she won the oratorical contest. Hey, he gestured defensively. Tell them. One person threw the tomato. One. Kevin snickered. <laughs> yeah, 
and a thousand wanted to. Did you notice the cheers when it happened? People blame her for the team team losing, for our undefeated season going down the toilet. I wasn't sure Kevin was still talking about them. Kevin, I felt myself pleading, she was only a cheerleader. Leo, he was pointing, you asked me what was going on. I told you. He stood up and took his tray to the belt. I stared at his empty chair until he returned. Kevin, the happy birthday songs, the Valentine cards, all the nice things she does for people, doesn't that count for something? The bell rang. He got up. He gathered his books. He shrugged. I guess not. For the rest of the day and the next and the next, I grew increasingly paranoid. Walking with her in and around the school, I was intensely aware that the nature of our aloneness had changed. It was no longer a cozy tunnel of love sweetness, but a chilling isolation. We never had to veer, never had to make way for someone else. Everyone made way for us. Hallway crowds fell away from us, except for Hillary Kimball. Whenever we passed her, she tilted toward us with a gloating smirk on her face. As for Stargirl, she didn't seem to notice. She jabbered constantly in my ear. And while I smiled and nodded to her, frost formed on the back of my neck. 